A lot of fans seem to have just discovered how lopsided NASCAR's TV revenue split is. So let's talk about the breakdown. Thanks to Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith, the owner of Speedway Motorsports Incorporated, in their Twitter feud last week, a lot of NASCAR fans realized just how lopsided the NASCAR TV revenue split is. I guess a lot of people just haven't paid that much attention to it, and honestly, it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of people that just want to watch cars go around on the track, the racing, everything that involves with it, don't really pay attention to the business side of the sport. But if you don't know what the TV revenue split is, right now NASCAR is in the final year of a 10-year $8.5 billion deal. So at the end of this year, it switches over. 2025 is the start of a new media rights deal, which of course will incorporate four different partners, five different partners technically if you count the CW into it. But we're not talking about that. Right now we're talking about this current 10-year $8.5 billion deal. The current breakdown and what seems to be the holdup in the charter negotiations right now is this revenue split. The current revenue split is broken up three different ways. 65% of the revenue goes to the tracks, 25% of the revenue goes to the teams, and the 10% remaining goes to NASCAR. Right now, the teams want more of that you know, revenue breakdown. They want a chunk of what the tracks get. And Denny kind of elaborated on that on his podcast this week, Actions Detrimental, Go listen to it, watch it, however you want to consume it. He does do a pretty good breakdown of of his thoughts and the things that go into it. And I'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, set your Denny bias aside. When he does talk about the business side of the sport on his podcast, he's nearly spot on most of the times, almost all the times, honestly. So when it comes down to it, right now, let's look at what the tracks get. They get 65% of that $8.5 billion. How much is that? Well, over the life of the contract, over that 10 years, that's $5.525 billion. That is a lot of money, 65%, obviously. So when you break that up and you kind of cut that down, that comes down to $552.5 million per year to be dispersed amongst the tracks. Well, that comes down to about $15.3 million per race. So each race that happens, that track receives $15.3 million each year. So over the life of the contract, you can just multiply that by 10, and that's how much they receive over the lifespan of that contract. So SMI currently has 15 dates on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule. That is Marcus Smith's company. They lease out Coda, so I'm throwing it in here as the 15th race. That comes down to $230.2 million a year that they are receiving. And multiply that by 10, what do you get? $2.3 billion over the lifespan of this 10-year $8.5 billion deal. That's a lot of money. That is a whole lot of clams, as they say. So when you sit back and you look at it, you're like, well, you know, $15 million for a race, that doesn't seem like that much. And then you look at it and you're like, well, as a company, they're receiving $2.3 billion over the last 10 years to host NASCAR races. That doesn't even include ticket sales, concessions, merch, Ad sales for all the ad space around their racetrack, hospitality suites, parking, doesn't include any of that. But they're making $15.3 million per race before they even before people even come in the gate. They know they're receiving at least $15 million. That's a lot of money, like I said. And then this is where the holdup is. A lot of teams, Denny Hamlin has kind of alluded to this, not only this year, but uh, last year and probably the year before that as well. Uh, a couple other people within the industry have all said the same thing. If you've been to an SMI track, you more than likely know what we're talking about here. Denny's biggest point of contention right now is he doesn't think that SMI is reinvesting that money, that $2.3 billion essentially that they've received over the last uh, 10 years into their facilities, right? He kind of, that's what started off the whole thing with the Sonoma repave, where he's like, you went cheap. You lay this on paper thin. This is what's going to happen. You go to Texas, the big video board. It's got panels out. It's got pixels out. That's unacceptable for the amount of money that they're receiving. The paint's faded. Concession stands look, you know, run down. Wi-Fi doesn't work at racetracks. Seat numbers are faded and beyond gone. Add, add all that up, and that's what people are mad about. They're mad that they're not reinvesting into the sport. Meanwhile, Denny's like 2311 Racing over the last five years has reinvested, in his opinion, more money into the sport than what SMI has put back into the sport. And honestly, he might not be wrong when you account for charter prices, building a new shop. Nobody had, nobody told them they had to build a new shop, right? He's just investing in the future of the company, buying the cars, driver salaries, team salaries, and everything that goes into it. 2311 Racing is putting a lot of money into the sport right now. And apparently... A lot of people don't think SMI is. 
So when you look at it from a track standpoint, they're making out as old people like to say, like gangbusters. So now when you go over to the team side of things, they get 25% of that eight and a half billion dollars, right? So when you take a look at it, 10 years of eight and a half billion dollars at 25% comes down to 2.125 billion dollars on a per year basis. That's 212 and a half million dollars. So now when we break that up over the 36 chartered cars, split it equally, that comes down to $5.9 million per car per season. Racetracks are getting $15.3 million per race. Teams are getting $5.9 million per car per season, not per race. So obviously that'd be a bonkers number to get per race. Teams are like, yes, sign us up for that. We would love to have that. Cover our whole budget in five races. Um, no. So $5.9 million for the whole season. And of course, let me preface this by saying, the revenue split for the teams is not broken up evenly. All that money goes into uh, essentially the matrix, into the uh, formula, and then it gets paid out based on you know the finishing order of the championship and then your preceding three years as well. That's how the charter formula works, and then that formula spits out the number that you get at the end of the year. So they're not all equally getting $5.9 million. For rough math, I'm just using that right there. So you can see there's a huge disparity here between what the tracks are getting and what the teams are getting. And now what's happened to that other 10%? That other 10% goes to NASCAR. So $850 million over the lifespan of this 10-year contract, $85 million a year, essentially. But, but... You have to remember that NASCAR owns ISC, International Speedway Corporation. They have the other half of the NASCAR schedule, right? Uh, right now, SMI has 15 races. The other, um, the other, well, essentially, what it comes down to, 18 races goes to uh, ISC, and then there's three independent tracks out here with Gateway, Indianapolis, and Pocono. So ISC takes the other uh, races and that accounts for about 270 277 million dollars per year that's how much they're getting on top of the 85 million dollars that nascar is receiving because again they're the same company here so when teams are asking for more of a cut from what the tracks are getting you have to remember the whole politicking of this teams want more money that money is going to have to come out of that 65 percent that the tracks are receiving smi is going to fight to keep all their money nascar is going to fight to keep all of their money so not not only is are the teams asking for the tracks for you know to take a lesser cut, they're also essentially asking NASCAR to take a lesser cut. And that has set up a bit of a civil war. Cold war, really. At this point, it's a cold war, right? We've seen people throw shots. People are saying things. People are saying things back. Nobody's really made a move yet. There hasn't been any boycott. There hasn't really been any, you know, public, you know, front-facing statement that's egregious or aggressive egregious wasn't the right word aggressive is the right word so right now it's a bit of a cold war we're in a standoff and both sides are looking at each other kind of figuring out when trying to figure out what the other side's going to do and where we're at right now mm, i don't think they're in a good spot at least not according to what denny hamlin has to say and if they were in a good spot this would have wrapped up already right we still wouldn't be here talking about it teams want upwards of 50 percent of the revenue and here's the tricky part right nascar is in a odd nascar is in a precarious situation here not only are they the governing body not only do they own half the tracks on the nascar cup series schedule but they also have to keep smi their other partner happy in this as well and without the race tracks there's nowhere to race but without the race teams there's no one to race so you're in this weird standoff of like we have to keep the tracks happy because we need them to be able to race on but at the same time, we have to keep these teams happy because without the teams, we don't have anybody to race there. And it's not like they can just call up people like they did back in the day when they threatened to boycott at Talladega and be like, hey, guess what? Cup guys aren't running this week. You're in. Who are they going to call? If you're going to run Gen 7 cars, you can call mm, nobody, right? Maybe you can call up the money team and they can bring out their car and bounce around the track and hopefully Connor Daly doesn't lose all of his fillings in the process. But you're not getting anybody else to show up. Oh, you maybe can run Xfinity cars as cup cars, but fans aren't going to show up to watch Brandon Jones, no offense to Brandon Jones, when they pay cup prices. So at the end of the day, it's this fine line of being like, that's what negotiations are, right? Tracks are going to have to give up some of that money. And I'm purely speculating here. I think that they end up giving up 15%. I think tracks move down to 50%. I think teams move up to 40%. And then NASCAR takes the other 10% like they have been. 
I think that's maybe the closest solution. I don't think you're going to see an equal split of 45-45-10 for NASCAR. I just don't think that's going to happen. I don't think tracks are willing to take a 20% cut over what they currently have. So for me, uh, this deal is going to get done. It has to get done, essentially. If it doesn't, uh, things are going to get real weird at the end of the season here. So we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. But I know a lot of people were confused about how the revenue split down or breakdown worked. And a lot of people didn't even know that the split was set up this way. So hopefully that gives people a little bit more information on sort of where the money side of things stands at with the revenue deal that we're currently on. Obviously, we can't break down anything on the next media rights deal until we know what the percentages are for who's going to get what. Because if I did it with the current percentages, it's just going to be slightly inflated. Not going to really tell us much right there. So that's the breakdown. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.